ठीक है हमारे पास और हम डॉक्टर साहू किसके बाद हमारे पास जो है इसमें डॉक्टर अरुणा भारती मैडम का और संदीप साहू सर का प्रेजेंटेशन दो है मैडम उसके बाद हमारे साइकिल कुमार में पोस्टर हैं तो पोस्टर हमने जो कैंडिडेट्स हैं उन लोगों ने अपने अपने पोस्टर बाहर कर दिए वेलकम टू दैमो Today we will be looking at the Stellar 150 variant. The other variant is the Stellar 100. Uh, the difference between the 150 and 100 is that Stellar 150 has the VAPS mode, uh, IVAPS patented mode, versus the Stellar 100 does not have the VAPS mode. The Stellar is a non-invasive, non-invasive ventilator and approved for use in tracheostomy. It has got all the non-invasive modes plus the VAPS mode. Now uh, this is a very uh, portable ventilator and has got around three hours of battery backup. Uh, over here in the front part of the stella you have the inspiratory uh, port at the back of the stella you can see here uh, we have the air inlet the whole thing is the air inlet this behind this is the air filter you can remove it and see the air filter here this has to be changed every 6 month any discoloration uh, it has to be changed instantly every one week it has to be dabbed and the close it can be closed and then we have the oxygen uh, inlet over here wherein 30 liters of oxygen can be given at the back if you see we have see the spo2 connection over here we can have a external fio2 connection other than that we can have the uh, usb connection this is for service and to take the data from stellar or put in the data into stellar and then we have the remote monitoring accessory wherein a 50 meter cord can be attached to a alarm uh, which can be heard in the next room in case the patient caregiver is Uh, present in the next room other than that we have a micro usb for uh, service use this is where we connect the power inlet and this is the on off button for stella right now uh, we will go to the front of the stella now uh, or the face of the stella now coming to the face of the stella we have the display over here we have the power source indicator this is the alternating current uh, current indicator now that the stella is charging we can see the alternating current indicator is shown if at all it was running on battery it this would be lit or if it is running on direct current this would be lit other than that if there are any alarms this will be uh, lit and if um, uh, you want to mute the alarm this is the alarm mute button over here we have the dial uh which will uh, which can be rotated or it can be pressed and that is how we um use it to change the settings uh over here we have the main menus we have the monitoring menu we have the setting menu and we have the information menu and then we have the power on uh, button over here to start ventilation or stop ventilation now once we turn on the stella the display lights up in the display what you can see on the left hand uh, upper uh, corner is the battery indicator post which you have information on um, the topmost bar which should be seen once we start ventilating the patient we can see the patient right now is on or the ventilator right now is um, on program 1 on iwaps mode and here it is uh, locked clinical um, clinically it is locked Uh, so to unlock this device what we have to do is we have to use this power dial and the settings menu and click on it for a uh, for 3 seconds and then you can unlock it for 5 minutes 20 120 minutes or unlimited so like i said you have to just turn the dial uh, select unlimited and click on um, the unlimited option other than that now if at all i have to change the settings for the patient i have to click on the settings menu and over here we can select which mode we want either like i mentioned all the niv modes are present in this device that is the s mode the cpap mode the s mode the st mode t iwaps and pack mode a unique feature about the stellar is it has got the pathology setting in the pathology setting let's say there is a new uh, person who is doing the settings or and your assistant who is doing the setting who is not very sure of settings he can just click on pathology and choose the pathology that the patient has and the device itself will put the initial settings uh, for the patient like for a ohs patient we need a high epap so you can see when i clicked on ohs and st mode it gave a high higher epap whereas if i had to select uh, obstructive pathology let's say of a copd patient what we will see is uh, the epap is at 5 but you can see the cycle sensitivity will be increased because in a copd patient we want a high cycle sensitivity so that the patient uh very easily goes into exhalation mode so that there is more of um, carbon dioxide wash out right so this is about the settings other than that 
uh, in the settings, we have the advanced settings. We have the, obviously the IPAP, EPAP, and backup rate. Other than that, we can go into the advanced settings. We can wherein we can put the fine fine tune the settings of so the TI min, TI max, the trigger, the cycle, the rise time, fall time, and the mask type. So if you click on these settings again, you can get the alarm settings. You all can set the alarms as per your clinical requirements in page two out of three. And going to page three out of three, you have other uh, extra options, like if you want to do the learn circuit, if you want to do the FIO to calibration, if you want uh, option like smart start on, smart start is a feature wherein the device can understand that the patient has worn the mask and start the therapy by itself without clicking on the power on button right other settings like ramp time start epap and other settings can be set under options now this was about the clinical settings so now that we have done the settings i will now start uh, the ventilation for the with the test lung over here you can see i've, I've put a single limb ventilator and i've connected the single limb ventilator to the test lung um, we can see we had put the patient on program one and in the ST mode. And as we had done the settings over there, you can see that we have put the pressure bar over here with uh, EPAP of uh, 5 and IPAP of 13 centimeter of water. Now coming to the monitoring menu, you have one out of eight pages. This is the first page. In the first page, you will see that you can uh, not only see the pressure bar, but also in the bottom bar, you all can see what is the leak the RR, the TI, the VT, and the MV at all times. So as we go from one monitoring display to the other, there are eight displays. You all can see in the second display also, the bottom bar always remains and the pressure bar always remains for the patient to look at. Other than that, you all can see the parameters on page two. We can see what is the pressure and flow curve on page three. We can see what is the minute ventilation and the respiratory rate on page four. The leak in the next page the tidal volume over the last 15 breaths and the synchronization. Here what you can see is wherever there is a spontaneous respiration, let's say I uh, do not allow any leak at this point in time and um, you can see the red color triangle basically indicates that the breath was given by the device. right? Coming to the, and the yellow color triangle basically means the breath was ended by the device. So there was no spontaneous triggering over here in this breath and there is no spontaneous cycling over here in this breath. And along with it, you all can see what is the spontaneous triggering percentage and spontaneous cycle percentage because that's an important parameter for you all to take clinical decisions. Other than that, in the last page, you all can see what is the oximetry data. That is only if the SpO2 is connected probe is connected, you can see what is the SpO2 data and the pulse oximeter data. So this is about the monitoring menu. I have finished the settings menu in the first part itself. Coming to the information menu, in the information menu you have the event summary. Again you have 12 pages over here. Or These are all the events uh, that have happened with the device. Other than that when you click again you go to the next page, you all can see what is the uh, leak that the patient had over the last uh, one week. Uh, similarly, you can see the other parameters of the last one week, be, um, be it the minute ventilation, tidal volume, respiratory rate, IE ratio, pressure support, AHI and SpO2. The average value, the 95th percentile and the 5th percentile value can be seen for the last um, one week. Other than that, in the last page, you can see the device information and the, any reminder that you may need can be set in the last page. That was about the Stella demo. Thank you so much for watching. In the following part, we would like to demonstrate how to reprocess components of the Fabius GS Premium, which frequently need to be cleaned. Please note that any reprocessing intervals depend on the patients and on the use and position of filters. A table containing information on the frequency of cleaning depending on different filter setups can be found in the instructions for use of Fabius GS Premium. We start by cleaning and disinfecting the surfaces of Fabius GS Premium which are frequently interacted with. First, remove all visible residue from the surfaces of the device. This is followed by disinfection. 
As there is a wide range of germicides available, we've conducted over 20,000 tests to ensure compatibility of the materials used in our products. The instructions for use of Fabius GS Premium includes a list of validated agents. To disinfect the surfaces of Fabius GS Premium, use a cloth or disinfection wipes according to hospital standards and the manufacturer's instructions. When wiping, make sure that no liquids penetrate into the anesthesia machine as the agents might impair correct functionality. All components of the Fabius GS Premium that are in direct contact with patient gases can be reprocessed using a cleaning and disinfection machine or manual disinfection. We will now guide you through the disassembly procedure, which can be performed without any tools. The breathing system is called COSI, short for Compact Breathing System. First, disconnect all cables and hoses from the COSI and remove the CO2 absorber. Remove the breathing bag holder by loosening the two thumb screws. Take the COSI off the Fabius GS Premium. To dismantle the inspiratory and expiratory valves, you have to unscrew the retaining nuts and remove the transparent inspection caps. Then remove the blue sealing gasket. Finally, take out the ceramic valve discs. These are fragile, so pay extra attention during this step. Next is the APL valve, short for Adjustable Pressure Limitation Valve, which can be easily unscrewed. Remove the sample line hook from the APL valve connector and from the waste gas outlet port. Now turn the cozy around and remove the optional CO2 absorber adapter and the anesthetic gas scavenging waste gas port. Complete the disassembly of the cozy by unscrewing the expiratory port and extract the flow sensor guard and the flow sensor itself. Further parts of the piston ventilator carry patient gas, which means that they need to be reprocessed as well. There is the ventilator hose, connecting the cozy and the piston ventilator, which simply needs to be taken off the connectors. Then there are the piston ventilator cover and membrane. Open the piston ventilator door, disconnect the pressure sensor line, and unlock all three clasps to extract these from the piston ventilator. All parts of the piston ventilator and cozy, except the flow sensor, can be thermally disinfected in the cleaning and disinfection machine and can be sterilized. To maximize the effect of the cleaning agent, position parts so that all interior spaces are completely flushed and water can drain off freely. When reprocessing the O2 absorber adapter, insert the cleaning disc into the adapter and close it until it snaps into place. Do not forget to remove the cleaning disc after reprocessing. The ventilator hose can be connected to the inspiratory port to flush the cozy thoroughly. Start the washer disinfector using a suitable program, preferably an anesthesia program. After completion of the cleaning and disinfection program, remove the parts from the washer disinfector and inspect them for visible soiling and damage. If necessary, repeat the program or clean manually. Finally, shake out any retaining water and allow the parts to dry thoroughly. Next is the flow sensor of Fabius GS Premium. There are two types of flow sensors, the Spiro Log flow sensor and the Spiro Life flow sensor. Both flow sensors can be manually cleaned and disinfected by immersion. To clean the flow sensor, immerse it completely and bubble free in the solution for at least 15 minutes. At the beginning and at the end of the contact time, vigorously swirl the flow sensor at least three times. After completing the cleaning procedure, wash off all cleaning agent residues. Repeatedly swirl the flow sensor in the disinfection solution. The contact time should be at least 15 minutes. Ensure that the solution flushes all surfaces and interior spaces. Sufficiently rinse the flow sensor in a sink filled with water until no disinfectant residue can be recognized and inspect the flow sensor for visible soiling and damage. Finally, allow the flow sensor